during the pandemic here in Ireland, we passed a, a several series of restrictions. Our restrictions lasted for 666 days and six hours, uh, precisely from when uh, our leader, who was in Washington at the time, this was during Mar March, he stood up and said, look, we're going to have some restrictions in Ireland. And, and you know, <laughs> It was, it was, if you've ever seen that movie, um, uh, Harry Potter, in which, you know, they're at, at one of the movies, they keep inventing laws every different weeks and they're putting these laws on, on the wall every single week. I don't remember which it was, but, uh, you know, there was this restriction, that restriction, the other restriction, and all these laws differ. Well, it was the same in Ireland. We don't have to, um, to think about it too much. But the first thing that happened in Ireland was the mass became not essential now to be fair on the irish bishops back in march 2020 not knowing the full extent and there is church precedent where churches are closed during times of plagues and um and uh, influences you know a hundred years ago it happened the same time during the the great the great um you know the Spanish flu churches were closed at certain times to uh, to prevent the spread of infection but in in Ireland's case a year later we were a full year later in 2021 we still had no mass for Easter um and this is a whole year when we're watching for example well I was watching the mass in Christ the King in Gothenburg online and the public were going to the mass the whole during the pandemic the public were going to the mass in Gothenburg uh, the Catholic Church and I was just thinking well how come they kept going for mass the whole year and the, 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 the place didn't close down you know hundreds of people didn't get infected uh, and so a year later I suppose Catholics were kind of asking well what's going on here you know, why can't we have mass like Catholics around the world were having mass in some places? Um, and I suppose one thing that came to mind was, uh, you know, we think back to penal times. Uh, and I do encourage people to please get the book Ireland's Loyalty to the Mass. Um, it's quite an incredible book. But in this book, it talks about a cousin of ours, Father Anthony Nugent. Um, and it's just <laughs> impressive to see his ingenuity of us, us Nugents would have it, wouldn't we? Um, his ingenuity in staying in Ireland as a priest and ministering as a priest, knowing full well he's going to be killed. I mean, that resignation, I'm going to stay here and offer the sacrifice to the mass, no, ministering to people, knowing that his life is at is at risk resigned to the fact that he's going to be he's going to be hung for this and um, just reading the letters that he would have sent at the time it's a, it's a fascinating insight into Ireland's history um, I'm just going to read you something here from a letter that Father Anthony Nugent uh, OFM cap written in June of this year we learn that no ecclesiastic dared to show himself openly in the city of Waterford and that neither influence nor reward could procure the smallest toleration. As for me he adds I pass freely through the city for I serve as a gardener the chief heretic sometimes too I work in carrying loads passing as one of the coal porters the chief heretic was the Puritan governor, Colonel Lawrence, in whose household the dexterous Capuchin, to use Macaulay's phrase, dwelt and made himself useful in every possible way. So useful indeed was he, and so skilful a gardener, that Cook, the chief justice of Munster, would sometimes bar for him for a couple of days. Yet all this time, says Cardinal Moran, Father Nugent was with imminent risk of his life, visiting and instructing the remnant of Catholic citizens. Searches for priests and religious were vigorously carried out with imprisonment, banishment or death. Were constantly staring the, these in the face. In this year also, 
uh, a priest of the Order of St. Dominic for celebrating Mass and, and administering the sacraments, especially that of penance, endured the glorious martyrdom of being hanged in the public square of Clonmel. And then there's another part of the, I'm just going to read here, another part of the letter. From a letter written in Galway on the 18th of July by Father Anthony Nugent to his brother Capuchin, Father Christophe, Chrysostom Kearney in Char Charleville, France, we learn that despite his many disguises, the better to administer the sacraments, he was betrayed in Waterford. Providentially making his, his escape from prison, after many adventures he reached Galway and was now passing off as a Scotch peddler, hawking from about cheap goods for sale. Within two years, he was three times uh, uh, detected by spies, but each time succeeded in eluding them, but was now at his wit's end, not even having the necessities of life. He then, he then goes on to tell us that Father Bernard, his confrere, discharges his missionary duties in the neighbourhood. Yet he adds, I have no doubt he will soon end his life on the gallows, for he exercises his ministry in the most dangerous places and is eager, eagerly pursued by heretics. Father Gregory is in County Cork, but we do not dare visit him. The road is so beset with dangers and so many guards of soldiers are sanctioned everywhere. We, ha we have here an abundant spiritual harvest for the leading Catholics of other three provinces are transplanted hither in Connacht. A few missionaries still remain despite the havoc made by persecution. The gallows is always impending over us, yet we never were in better spirits than in those days. Although, like Nebuchadnezzar, we have to feed with the beasts in the field. In, in the very ship that was bearing away the letter from which we take these details, 30 priests were being sent into exile from Galway, 8 from Limerick and others from Cork. He concludes by asking for others to take their place, since, he says, the necessity this kingdom must soon be in want of apostolic labourers. So you can go and read the history of um, the Ireland's loyalty to the mass, you know, and uh, we used to hear these stories as kids all the time because the Nugents were so bound up with the church um, in, in all over Ireland and, um, and you know, as, as well as being Jesuits and, and Capuchins and Franciscans and and so forth. So you, these stories were always impacted me and still impact me. And hopefully my kids, when they're bigger and they understand the history that they come from, they'll understand that Ireland had an incredible loyalty to the mass. But I always, I find it very sad, especially over the last three years, to see, um, especially how we treat the Eucharist. Because all during those penal times, the Irish fought for the Mass. They fought for the Mass. And yet today in the church, when I just think about it, and I was just dawning my... I mean, the Mass that we would have... that Irish fought for is is banished, in effect. You know, it's... And again, don't make me out to be a rad trad or some trying to cause division in the church, but I always find it interesting that that Mass... That Latin mass that was said during penal times now is what is being persecuted inside the church. Okay, you know, live and let live. Let's. Uh, I, I thought ben, Pope Benedict had it had had the proper view, and you know, it's not here to challenge Pope Francis. But I just thought, yeah, you know, why would we push so much to destroy that mass that was said during penal times in in the church? But even then, the new mass. Uh, you know, over the last three years or during these those 666 days of restrictions, even that penal mass, that new mass was persecuted to such an extent that everything was put in place so that people couldn't go to mass. Um, and we were we were we were left going back to underground churches in houses around Ireland. 
you know, we're back to penal times. We were really back to penal times. Um, and, uh, you know, it's an, it's, it, was an, it was a surreal time that I never thought, you know, passing through Garda checkpoints to go to Mass. Why are you travelling? Why are you travelling? I mean, we used to go up to the north because they had less restrictions up there and you could go to Mass in the north. But, <laughs> you know, and, you know, even after restrictions were lifted, in the majority of Irish Catholics don't bother going to Mass. The majority of Irish Catholics couldn't be bothered to kneel for the Eucharist like their ancestors did. You know, what did we do to the Mass? What did we do to the Eucharist? And when you when you seriously think about this, it just does, it just does uh, imp- challenge me. You know, what did we do to the faith as Irish Catholics? You know, we've sold ourselves to the to the serpent, you know, to to wealth, to everything. You know, when it comes to mass, we'll put everything in front of making the time to go to mass in Ireland. If we even bother, because, you know, the modern Irish Catholics, you know, half the time they couldn't be as, you know, they couldn't they, you know, I'd be religious, but I wouldn't go to Mass every Sunday. How many times have I have I, have I heard this? Uh, so hopefully next generations can look at the sacrifice that Irish Catholics did for the faith, what it meant to them, uh, what they died for. You know, today we're hardly able to get up a bed on a Sunday to go to Mass. Um, you know, even when we have vigil Masses, which the Irish wouldn't have had back in the day we're not even bothered to go to mass on a saturday sometimes never mind go to mass on a sunday because the faith means so little um but i i just thought it was impressive when i read about father anthony his all his different disguises you know going from waterford to galway and being captured and imprisoned i mean it 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 would make a fascinating novel just on him on his life you know let let alone not the other the other um priests that gave their lives and it's so and it's a pity that some of these priests are canonized saints for having you know you know having death in front of you you know you know every day this could be my last day you know i'm going to be lynched uh another another cousin of ours um oliver plunkett look he did stand for for the faith i always meditate on you know him going to his death and he's looking at the crowds you know, just looking at the crowds of going up to Tyburn, uh, you know, it was, it must have been to witness that and to to know what faces you. I mean, he wasn't afraid, but to give your life for Christ must be something uh, profoundly moving. Um, and it's something that cha- that should challenge us. And yet today, <laughs> we're not asked to, 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 mar- to be martyrs in, in that sense. And yet we're not able to teach the faith. We're not able to teach the faith. We will present a synodal document from Ireland in Rome next month. That past generations, let's be honest, they would they would look on with disgust at us Irish. What have you become? What are you talking about? What are you talking about here in this document? You're bored at Mass. Look at us, we died for the Mass. You're bored at Mass. Because you didn't teach your children the faith. You didn't teach your bishops have failed in their in their obligation to teach us the faith. I'm not talking about the present generation of bishops, I'm talking about the, the bishops then and, and the, the, the you know got lazy in the sixties, seventies, eighties, you know, got lazy. They were sleeping with their housekeepers and God knows what. They got lazy. They didn't they didn't live the faith. They weren't saints. And you know, it's time, it really is time for us to, to wake up and understand, okay, well, what is the apostolic faith that has been passed on? What is the way that we're, that we're called to live? And how we're supposed to pass this on to next generation? You know, we're not called to offer the sacrifice of the Mass that's, oh, easy. Oh, I'm bored at Mass. It's boring. Yeah, it's boring because people look for entertainment. We've turned the Mass into entertainment. And if it's not entertaining, people don't go. You know, the Protestantization of the Mass in the last 15 years, it may, you know, means so if it's not oh, you know, entertaining, then I won't go. The Mass is the praise and worship of God. It's not there to entertain us. We're there to give praise and worship to God. We're called to 
you know that is the highest form of prayer in the church um and uh, I, I i do hope that the remain the remnant irish catholics now because we are the remnant those that actually believe in the sacrifice of the mass those that will actually bend the knee as our ancestors did those that will actually learn to serve at the mass you know that our ancestors did those that have to keep that they keep the faith you know we are the remnant you know and um I, I think we owe our ancestors more respect than what we what we've done to the faith today you know the, the they had masses in in the you know in the in desperate situations and yet they kept the faith and yet today we're we're, we're too proud to even bend the knee for the eucharist which is the and which is the norm of the roman rite we're too proud to even bend the knee and receive communion nearly on the tongue because we're well, i don't know what this happened to irish catholics sometimes but um you know what previous generations held sacred is sacred to me and great to me and the sacrifice that previous generations of Nugent did you know speaks to us today speaks to our family today so we keep that faith um and pray for the church uh, in these times that that we have leaders that stand up and just tell us what is the truth you know tell us the truth in charity don't 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 be shy stand up because being lukewarm will get will get you know being lukewarm is is the same as having no faith at all it's even worse than having no faith lukewarm catholics you know what are we doing we need to you need we need to be brave and stand up and be leaders in the faith god bless you Take care. Bye-bye.